Today, I'm going to turn this cheap cocktail dress and some scrap fabrics and materials into a Miss Universe worthy evening gown. My name is Austin. I'm a wearable art creator. She's so pretentious. Shut up. And welcome to my channel and let's go on this journey with me. So, this is my sister old short dress that she gave me because she doesn't really wear it anymore. It has gold glitters all over it. Sweetheart neckline. Simple, nothing special. She also gave me some scrap fabric. I really love this one. This is beautiful. It has a little bit of shine to it. It's lacy. And it has tassel. Let's see what we're gonna do with this. I also have some lace ribbon. Oh yeah, this is great. Um, this it's been sitting in my closet for the past three years. It's from one of my school projects. My group bought too much of the fabric and so I just got a bunch of leftover that I didn't know what to do with it. Yeah, I just found the color quite matching so I think it's gonna be perfect. All of these are just leftover from past projects and stuff I already have so I didn't have to spend a penny on any of the supplies. Alright, so every project will start with some designing process. So I'm starting mine by sketching. First, I use the tool fabric to make the train of the gown. And of course, I'm gonna extend the neckline of the dress to make it more classy and evening gown. I want to cover up the entire dress in the glittery lace fabric. And I want to have some kind of cutout design on the waist of the bodice. So I'm just testing out a bunch of designs on the sketch. None of this matters in the end anyway because I didn't follow with my sketch and went with a different design eventually. But you know, I figured out it would be fun for you guys to see the, the sketching process. Okay, so for the two fabric, I think the leftover I had measures about two yards to three yards of fabric. I, I'm not really sure. So I love a two skirt that is just a little bit sheer and very blowy and voluminous, but I don't want it to be too puffy. So let's start by pinning the two fabric onto the bottom of the cocktail dress so we can have a gathered skirt. I don't have a sewing machine, so I'm, I'm sure that if you have one, this process would have been so much quicker. Okay, so once the fabric is pinned to the dress, as you can see, we have a lot of leftover fabric. So we're gonna trim that off with just a pair of scissors, like a good scissors. Just snip, 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 snip right across. Yeah, let's move on to sewing the two fabric onto the cocktail dress. And again, if you have a sewing machine, go ahead and use that. But I'm just gonna sew it by hand. And I just used basic backstitching. This process is quite therapeutic, to be honest. Even though it took a lot of time to do this by hand, but I quite enjoyed it. Especially if you have a show that you want to binge. I think it took me four or five hours to complete the sewing process. I know I worked overnight. Yeah, I'm a night owl. The night is where I thrive. Okay, so once this process is done, you're gonna trim the bottom of the gown. So, try it on, and I just use a measuring tape. I just hold down the zero with my toe. And then I bring up the tape measurement up to where the bottom of the cocktail dress is, and then you're gonna write down that measurement. Okay, now what I'm doing right here is to just making a bunch of messy marks so that I can have a reference line to trim it. Like, don't, don't stress too much about this step. I'm just gonna trim it above the marker lines. So it's fine. To be honest, <laughs> to be honest with you guys, during this point, I'm not even sure what I'm doing. I just take a pair of shears and I just, you know, go at it. I want the back of the skirt to be longer than the front. Of course, you want the front to be nicely lengthy so you can walk in it. But the back of the train, I want it to be long and draped all over the floor. So it's very beautiful. I just find that look to be very classy.
you know, once you're done trimming, you can put it on. I realized just one layer of the two fabric is way too sheer. That you can definitely see my leg through it. So remember that excess fabric that we trimmed out before? Turned out it's enough length for me to add a second layer of tulle. I should have known this, it would have saved me a lot of time, but you know, I had to start with this process one more time. And it's fine, you, know, you learn from your mistake. This is my first time making a dress by the way, so it's very exciting and of course, you can already tell that I am an amateur. But it's fine, creating is fun and you don't have to stress too much about skills and everything, like you will learn and you will figure out things along the way. And now I am happy with the sheerness of the skirt, we can move on to make the bodice of the dress. Wah, wah. So we're gonna make some pattern. I don't have a dress form, so I just draped the fabric on my body. Body yaddy yaddy. I want the neckline to be a V cut. Ooh. Uh, okay. Careful, don't paint yourself. Don't poke yourself. And for the strap to be around my neck. And I also want to use the tool fabric to make a sheer metal panel to, you know, just cover up the cleavage. But it still gives you the illusion of nude. <laughs> So yeah, once I've finished pinning the patterns, I mean the fabric, because we're gonna make the patterns out of this fabric. I take it off of the dress, I use a white fabric marker to just connect the pinpoint that I've made earlier. Cut it out, there we go. So in this designing process, I changed my mind. I ended up changing to a deep plunge v-neck for a sexy, modern, yet classic look. My dress is modern, yet classic. And there we go, we have a deep plunge. It's just as simple as that. And once we got the patterns, we can finally cut out the this beautiful lace fabric. And lucky for me, the scarf have enough fabric to make the entire dress. Very fascinating, very fascinating. Ladies and gentlemen, and that's the end of our ASMR session. Normally, you would sew this fabric into the bodice, but as I stated many times before, I don't have a sewing machine, and I don't think I'm patient enough to actually hand sew this bodice. So, we're gonna use A6000 glue. Yeah, this is definitely not hot couture. More like hot glue. <laughs> So I'm gonna hem the line of the lace fabric with some lace strip. These I actually used for one of my crowns project like two years ago. And I have a lot of leftover, or maybe not, maybe not enough. So apply enough glue. I would like to go crisscrossing just like so. And then you lay the fabric on top, fold over the lace. And just pat it down, press it flat. And once you're done hemming the fabric with the lace, make sure that you leave some leftover lace hanging off because we're gonna use that to make the strap. So of course, every project will have some hurdles and obstacles that you didn't expect, but you have to meet. So my first hurdle is that I ran out of lace strip when I'm working on the second triangle of the bodice, which is not fun. So I have to cut the lace in half lengthwise so I can double the amount of lace strip. And because of that, it's not nicely hem. You can see that it has this rugged raw edge. And that is something that we would have to deal with later on in the project. But I'm just gonna put that aside and we're gonna move on to the next step. 
I'm actually very happy with how the bodice turned out. So now I'm draping the dress and the bodice on my body again. And I'm just pinning it in place so I can cut out the sheer fabric for the cleavage panel. We have the pattern for the cleavage piece and I'm gonna lay on the two fabric to just make the base fabric. Just gonna add more structure so the lay is not gonna go whoop, 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 all around the body and just rip. You know? And I'm gonna lay on more layer of the two fabric so that it's, you know, not too sheer and just pin it in place. So yeah, we're just back to A6000 gluing the edges of the bodice onto the two fabric. This was a lot of works, you guys. It looks easy on video, but like, I have spent so many nights doing this. There's some rips on the lace fabric, so I just hand sew it back together. And once you're happy with the bodice, we can finally trim off the excess fabric. And there's a lot of excess fabric in the middle panel too, so we're gonna trim it off. And ladies and gentlemen, in the next few seconds, you're gonna witness a disastrous accident. Water. Water? Water? I think it's supposed to provide a fuel source. Okay. Sorry, I'm like Ah. Yes, I accidentally ripped the lining fabric, the two fabric underneath of the bodice. And like I didn't even realize that the tip of the shears are that sharp. Like it can rip this delicate two fabric. I wasn't even cutting into the sheer fabric. But you know, it's fine. We can just just adapt a basic thousand glue. We can glue it back together. I wish life was that easy. I wish I could just stitch up my broken relationships just as easy as that. But oh well. This V part of the cocktail dress can actually be seen through. And because of that, I'm just gonna remove this glitter fabric off of the cocktail dress. Making sure that you are very carefully trim off just the top layer and not actually ripping into the, the dress itself just like I did previously. Okay, day 8. We're back to the workroom and remember that ugly ragged edge because we were running out of lace? Well, it's time to deal with that. to just hem it up nicely. This is a simple and easy process, but it's very, very time consuming. I think I spent the entire day just to hem the edge. And because it's white, the color doesn't match at all. So I'm gonna dye the thread using some marker, like this champagne color. And it turns out nice. And now we can finally assemble the bodice on top of the cocktail dress. So make sure you pin it in place in all the right places. And I'll be patient with it. Don't rush this process because you don't want your dress to fall apart. And yeah, and don't forget to remove the, the pins. I actually had to use a tweezers because my pins are really small. And you know, I don't fully trust the X6000 to hold up nicely, so I'm gonna hand sew at these dress points. Ok, 
Later, it's time to make the strap attachment. So first, I just take some tool fabric and I'm gonna use some glue and fold it up multiple times to make the strap. You know, this would have been so much quicker if I still have more lace strip. But you know, I strictly want the dress to be made just from stuff that I already have because that's the whole theme of the video. To attach the strap, I just use some eisen hook, just sew it on. And now we can finally move on to finishing the dress. So before we can call it a day, I'm just gonna trim off the excess too above the sewing line at the skirt. Okay, so I tried the dress on, so I'm happy with the skirt. I'm happy with the bodice and what we have left here is the hip of the dress and so we're gonna cover that up with some of the same lace fabric just so that the, the color of the dress is consistent because it's not looking great right now with my initial design in the sketch the stone's placement dictates the lace fabric cutouts I tried different configurations but I was not living for any of the designs I was thinking like maybe I just should just you know just cover the entire thing in the lace and not having any cutout. But then look what I found. It was right in front of my eyes. So because of the scarf at the end having this interesting design with the, the triangles and then the tassels. And I was like, this is perfect. You're perfect, some you're beautiful. Them. So I just went with it. I used some black fabric and line it underneath of the lace so I can see the lace design a little bit better. I pin the top of the lace fabric in place. And for the bottom of the hip where it meets the, the skirt, I wanted to transition nicely so I went with these triangles so that it matched the top and make sure that you pin the lace fabric cleanly at the side seam luckily for me the lace fabric is kind of stretchy so you don't really have to cut it into any kind of pattern you just pin it in place so of course there's a zipper in the back of the dress so you would have to make a slit Time to glue the lace fabric to the dress. Hello, Mr. A6000. We meet again. So I would like to take the time to, you know, just tell you guys to smash the subscribe button. And make sure that you click the notification bell so you can get notified when I upload a new video. Because as we all know, I don't do that very regularly every single video that i put on my channel i worked very hard on and it takes a long time to produce each video so i would always prefer quality over quantity so yeah i don't want you guys to miss a single video so make sure that you ring the bell So, remember the transition part of the lace? I don't really like how it looked when I tried it on, so I redesigned it and I cut it off again. And it just looked much better that way, right? And to make sure that the hem of this lace fabric doesn't just bunch it up and roll up, I glue it down. And now it's time to work with the detail at the waist. So we have a lot of tassels and we need to glue it down. At first I thought I would just glue each individual tassel one by one, but obviously it was gonna take forever. And I struggled to create a strong bond of the tassel with the fabric due to the small dot of E6000 glue. So I definitely have to brainstorm some ideas on how to do this. And so I came up with this idea. You're gonna need some hair clips. You know the hair clips that professional barber would use to section off your hair. So first you're gonna lay the tassels to its right direction, making sure that the tassels are even. And you're just gonna use a hair clip to hold the entire thing together. Then I ring some A6000 glue just straight across. And now you just simply flip the hair clip over the other edge and all of the tassels just lay perfectly in place 
and now just take a wooden skewer to press it down nicely. And once the glue has cured, we can go ahead and trim off the tassel. I feel like I'm giving a blonde person a haircut. It's so fun. And the dress is almost done. Of course, it's not gonna be a video of my channel if I not gonna put at least some kind of sparkles and rhinestones on the stuffs I make. And that is exactly what I'm gonna do. I wanna add a little bit more of the finishing touches so it is more glamorous and beautiful. So for the nude illusion neck piece, I want to have these rhinestones running up to the neckline. The rhinestone is not just there for sparkles. I want to have something that will cover up the neck piece so the original line of the cocktail dress underneath would not be too obvious. Flat back teardrop rhinestones are also my leftovers. I bought a bunch of these two years ago when I was making my ice crown, like the very first crown that started up this entire channel. If you still remember that crown and you're still here today, then thank you so much for sticking with me after two years of this channel existence. And after 12 days of working spanning across a month, I have finished the dress and it's time for the reveal montage. Well, that was a fun project. I've never made a gown before, especially on this channel. And it's part of my Miss Universe look where I wear this gown with the Mickey Motor crown, which I've made last week. So it would be super nice if you can. Ch it would be super nice if you can also check out that video. I will link the video in the description box down below. Boop, boop. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Oh, I look like a vampire right now. Oh, showing some cleavage. You slut.